Okay, um, yeah, I, I said that after the break we're going to do impact, but um, I want to still do a little bit about this. Like, isn't it magic that if you do the, this Jacobian calculation, and, and you have to do it at home, it takes too long to do it here now, you get these numbers that it is exactly this force in components at the center of mass. So, Let's check. Let's check how it works. So uh, now we go back to the approach of uh, lecture one, where you do a free body diagram. So what we do, uh, we we draw our body here, and then, uh, or maybe a bit bigger. Draw our body here. Here's the center of mass. Here is the attachment point, and uh, the so the sizing is important, right? This was um, two third L. This was L. And then the spring was attached at um, L over 2, this height. So apparently we have here, uh, this is the line of action, we have a spring force here, Fs. And then what the Jacobian does, it decomposes it and it, and it shifts it to the center of mass. So let's do the decomposition. So um, we have to find the vertical and the horizontal component of this one. So we have this triangle, and the triangle is 1 over 2 and 2 over 3. That looks very complex, unless you make everything uh, uh, if this is 3 over 6, this is 4 over 6, right? Oh, and that is uh, uh, 3 v 5, 3, 4, 5. So this man must be 5 over 6. Or, in other words, this triangle is this 3, 4, 5 one. What is the next near integer? So you need integer numbers which are different, and n squared plus m squared is k squared, that's the assignment. n is 3, m is 4, k is 5. So what is the next one? Does anybody know? It, it's, it's a bit strange one, it's this which, it's, it's 12, 1, 13. And 12, 1, 13 is not so nice because the, the, it's so shallow, you never, you never use it. But anyway, so, um, so this is, uh, so th this means that if we have the force here, then apparently the vertical one is 3 over 5 times Fs, and this is 4 over 5 Fs. And that, and those are exactly the numbers we found when we took the Jacobian, when we calculated that. Now, still the forces are here, so we have to transfer them to the center of mass. And by doing that, we have to, well, if we transfer the horizontal force, no torque has to be introduced. If we transfer the vertical force, we take this vertical force times this distance. So we have to know this distance. And if I remember well, it was 1 over 6, yeah, 1 over 6. So we have to multiply this with this, and then we get 1 over 10. And that's exactly uh, the torque we found in this, in this Jacobian thing. So yes, it is a very elegant way of automatically incorporating passive and active elements. No free body diagrams, it's just a algorithm. Okay, uh, the second topic of today. What was the topic? Use other notes. Ta -ta -ta -ta. What was the topic? Oh yeah, impact. Yeah, impact. Okay. What is an impact? Sorry. I have two points here, and they get in contact. Is that an impact? 
exchanged? Uh, I exchange energy here. Is this an impact? Come on, guys, what is an impact? If you fall from your bike? Transfer of kinetic energy. Transfer of kinetic energy. Um, if I wiggle the balls, that's sort of transfer of kinetic energy. And ball, still not really an impact. What distinguishes an impact from all other things? Ow! It hurts, right? So what is an impact? <laughs> Ouch, it hurts. Well, why does it hurt? Because I'm a sissy? Why does it hurt? Because the force is too big, right? I mean, this doesn't really hurt. But the other thing, that was hurting. So, impact is hurting, or the force is large. And the other thing is, the duration of contact, how, how, how long was that? Very short. So, if I would say, what is an impact? Well, something you don't want to experience, first of all. Ouch. But you can characterize it by saying, it's a large force at a short time interval. So, it is contact mechanics, yes. And, but it's not this contact mechanics, it's this, right? Ouch! If you do it, it hurts. My hands hurt. Because the force was hard, was high, and it was for a very short duration. Okay, so now we will hopefully never forget what an impact is, right? Impacts are also in our multibody system. So, for instance, let's say we have a wall here, and here we have our, our, our double pendulum thing. And the double pendulum thing is moving such that um, it's approaching the wall. Eh? It's going into that direction. So you would expect that uh, a moment later there will be here, bang, there will be this impact uh, of this part hitting the wall. And then again, you have a new situation with uh, new velocities and, and then the thing continues. Now for these kind of systems, we want to do our calculation. So impacts within multibody dynamic systems. To understand what is going on, we're going to look at a very simple example. Yeah? Let's look at a simple problem. So, what is a simple problem? Uh, we, we, for the for the we, we we're going to do two bodies impacting, but we get, take very simple bodies. We we take these spheres. I have a mass m1, just a point mass, and it has some velocity v. And then there's another point mass with a, with a different mass, and it has a velocity u. And then when time progresses, thing, things will happen, because I took v to be larger than u. Meaning that, that he will catch up, and then they will, well, they will hit each other, and then they will separate again. So if I, if I draw a cartoon, this is just before the impact, then, and then they will, will uh, approach each other, and then there will be an impact here. Bang! Eh? Ouch! Hurts! Um, and then after that, you would expect that this one is slowed down, eh? the V plus after the impact, and, and uh, the U is then sped up, eh? the U plus. So this is T plus. So that is the process we're going to study. They approach, they, some impact happens, and then they, they separate again. If you um, draw this cartoon, uh, for, from this cartoon, for instance, the velocities, eh? let's, let's look at the velocities as a function of time. So here we have time, here we look at the velocities. Then uh, we, we know we start with some uh, initial velocity, which was high, eh? that was the V minus. And then a somewhat lower velocity, the u minus. And then here suddenly this impact occurs, right? And and let's enlarge a little bit the impact to to see what happens. So 
we really have enlarged the, the duration of this impact. So uh, this is this delta t, the, wh where are things happening, from t minus to t plus. But I, I focus a little bit on. Well, what happens is, uh, in this case now, of course, u plus is uh, larger than, than v plus, right? So uh, he, he sped up. So the outcome should be something like this. So this should be u plus. And then this should go uh, slower, so this should be V plus. And then how does it happen? Well, I don't know. Uh, something like this, or yeah, some smooth transition, right? So one is slowed down, and the other is sped up. OK, uh, having that diagram, and, and we always want to work from mechanics, right, from forces. And we know from Newton that uh, uh, forces, they change the velocity. And we see here a change in velocity. And that was his law. If, if you apply a force, you get a change in velocity. And here we see this change. So let's look at the change in velocity. So let's look at the acceleration. Accelerations. And the same sort of diagram. Again, we take these two moments in time, t minus and t plus. Then, um, well, at the beginning here, so this is uh, zero, so nothing much is happening, right? I mean, uh, the, the velocities are pretty constant, so uh, the, the v dot minus is, is zero, eh, almost, and the, and the u dot minus is also zero, nothing is happening. And then after this, this thing, again we have zeros, right, two zero lines. We have a, a u dot plus is uh, not really changing, and v dot plus. Uh, no. but in this thing, things are happening. So the only thing we have to look at is the slope. Eh? That's the derivative. Eh? That's the by definition. So let's take the easy one, uh, u. <coughs> so it becomes positive and then zero again. So it's like a bump. Eh? So the the u dot uh, would would look uh, something like this. So this is then the, the u dot. And uh, and the v well the the v uh, goes down and then. Uh, levels of to zero again at the slope. So and that slope is maybe a bit steeper because, uh, so uh, something like this or I don't know. So this is v dot. So now we see how the accelerations are. Uh, one one is sped up, positive acceleration. The other one is slowed down. But now we want to get into details. Uh, so this is the plus. This is the minus. Now the only way to to solve your whole problem is, of course, uh, what is our, our most power? Uh, we we want to know what is happening here. Uh, so we want to know if I draw, oops, not so nice. If I draw these, uh, we want to know what is happening here. It is this moment, this interaction. Um, what is our most powerful instrument? Okay. What? What is your power, most powerful instrument? Scissors. Yes, scissors. So if we want to know what is happening, we take our scissors. And you just cut everything. In the end, you can always glue it. I remember my kids always came to me and said, hey, Daddy, please, uh, broken glue. Please. Maybe you remember from your childhood. Anyway, uh, use your scissors because you can fix it always afterwards. So we make three body diagrams, and maybe we get this uh, one body and the other body here. And of course, when we cut, uh, there is an interaction. And what did Newton say? Um, that these forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So we, we, we can say, well, there's only one force F, eh? F in that direction, and here F in that on M1. So let's say this is M1, and this is M2. OK. Now, if we look at the figure, at the accelerations, and we know that our law was something like force is mass times uh, acceleration, eh? v dot, or, or no, yeah, mm -hmm. not the v I'm using here, but eh? force is mass times change in velocity. Then, if I would multiply these two graphs with a specific mass, I would get the, the force of interaction, right? So, we continue, and we make a new graph. <coughs> And I'm going to uh, draw the forces, so the force F. 
And well, there is no force eh, for this period, and for this period there is also another force. And on the basis of u dot, I can write, uh, draw a bell-shaped thing here, and this is then m, what was, uh, u was 2, eh? yeah, m2 times u dot. And it's exactly the same bell shape. Yeah, I could do that. If I do this, no, item picker, this, and I copy it, and I do this, oh. and I have exactly the same bell shape. And this guy is then M1 V dot, because by definition, these guys are the force of interaction, right? Yeah. By definition, if we look at this free body diagram, and this was the velocity V, and this was the velocity U, then what, what does Newton say? Minus F is M times V dot, and here plus F is M2 times U dot. Yeah. So these two, if I multiply them with their respective mass, the, the acceleration, oh, the, go away, then I get exactly the same thing. Now we go to the impact, and where in the impact case we say that the force becomes very high and the time becomes zero. And that's the idea. Here we see finite forces, but now we're going to shrink this, uh, not my thing, but we're going to shrink this time interval, eh? this was delta t. We're going to shrink this, and, and, and we're going to increase then the force, because we want to keep the area a little bit the same. And that, that's actually the whole idea of, the, of this impulse, right? So what are we going to do? Now, um, we want to keep this area constant. Why? Well, because the integral from t minus to t plus of this force is, and let's take this law, is apparently equal to the integral of t minus 2 t plus of, eh, we take <coughs> this one, of m2 u dot dt. And if we look at this, then the outcome is pretty obvious. That's m2 minus uh, u plus minus u minus. Eh? You can do the integral without even knowing what exactly the force was. So, because we know that we start with some, some velocity, eh? uh, we start with some velocity, and this is the end velocity, and, and the force is only acting in that period. Now, we, we like to give this guy a name, this integral f dt. Uh, we call that uh, impulse. Yeah. So, by definition, eh, impulse definition is integral force time. And actually, you, you should say the limit case where the time goes to zero. Eh? Because we, the impulse is really the case where you make the time shorter and then the force higher, but the net result is finite. But integral force with time is, is impulse. Okay. Now let's look at our problem again. So with this definition of, of P is the integral eh, of f dt, we now can rewrite our equations in a nice way. Because if we do that on the above equation and we take the integral, so we take the integral minus f dt is integral m1 v dot, eh, from t minus to t plus, of course, and here yeah. identical then the outcome is, of course, the result is minus p, eh, that was our definition, equals m1, and then that's the velocity after the impact, v plus minus before. Likewise, for, oh, go away, for body, the other body, we can do the same, eh, from t plus, t minus to t plus, f dt is, and then we take our equation from body 2, m2, u dot dt, sorry, from t minus to t plus, and the outcome is that the impulse is e equal to m2 velocity after impact, impact minus velocity before impact. So now we have our, a nice set of equations for our impact, eh? our, our impact equations. Okay. 
Um, so let's rewrite them again. Impact equations. Um, let's repeat them first. So we get minus P equals M1 V plus minus V minus. And the second one is P equals M2 U plus U minus. Now what are the knowns and the unknowns? Um, so, let's say what is known and what is unknown. Uh, do we know what P is? <coughs> nope. Unknown. Do we know what M1 is? Yeah. Do we know what V plus is? Nope. That's the velocity after impact. Yeah, after impact. Do we know V minus? Yes, we know V minus. Again here, P, we already had that one. M2 is a, also a known quantity. A U plus, again, we don't know what U plus is. And U minus, we should know what the velocity before impact is. So we have uh, three unknowns and two equations. How do we call that problem? Anyway, anything, goes. anything goes. In olden days of silk and stocking, showing a leg was shocking, oh heaven knows, anything goes. Okay, so, I mean, we have an infinite number of solutions for this, right? So, something is missing. What are we missing? Mm, why energy? Energy is conserved? Mm, no. If I do this, there's no energy conserved. My hand hurts. No, no. I, I haven't talked about any idealistic, elastic, plastic thing. <coughs> Sorry? Maybe some constitutive equation, yes. Which one? Glue. Ah. Which glue? You have to put glue between the two particles. What glue? Bison kit? No, Felpon? Is it constrained? I mean, it is in contact, but is it constrained? It's not really constrained. Ah, this is a hard one, anyway, uh, by the way. So, if you're lost for words, and I, I think you're lost for words here, then uh, you should look it up, right? Now, uh, what would be a good source to look at? The book, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, uh, suppose you haven't written the book. Um, who worked on these problems for the first time? Yeah. No, Newton already, because Newton said these things, eh, from like, uh, like uh, what the Newton sa said these things, like action and reaction and uh, is opposite and equal. Eh? This is what Newton said, and this is what Newton said. Actually, this, all this stuff is those three Newton laws. We're not seeing oh, you're not seeing any. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> all these things are Newton's laws, eh? One of the laws is uh, action is minus reaction or something like that. The other one is uh, if you need a change in velocity, you have to apply a force. And the third one, if you don't apply a force, nothing happens. Uh, there's no change in the velocity. Well, no, there are things happen. So actually, this is all Newton. Well, and it turns out that, that Newton, Newton has given, given it some, some thought. Now, what course are we doing? This course, we have this year. This is the third lecture. And I have some pages from Newton here. And, um, well, he has about axiomas or laws, so everybody, well, this is actually, yeah, if you don't apply a force, then nothing happens. Well, nothing, well, not really. But, and it, if you apply a force, then the change in the motion is, is proportional to the force you apply. And then the last one, to every action, there's always a post-equal reaction. <laughs> uh, 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 
that these f's are identical but opposite in sign. So now let's see what he wrote. He has corollaries. I only know that from a Toyota, right? Oh my God! It is in English, by the way. We're lucky because if I would really take the original source, it would be in Latin. Latin yeah. My Latin is a bit rusty. I, I see nothing on impacts. If the moment you see something on impacts, then then we should stop. Oh, ah, here. For action and its opposed reaction are equal by law 3, and therefore law 2, they produce motions in equal change. If the bodies meet with contrary motions, there will be an equal deduction from the motion of both. So they will change both. If a spherical body I with two parts of velocity is triple of a spherical body. So he, he talks here a little bit about bodies impacting, right? So if you have the stamina, you can read that, and and then it's interesting to see. He talks always in parts, like so, so many parts velocity. This and this has so many parts, and then they change, and then this has so many parts. It's always they they don't talk in absolute numbers. They talk always in 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 balances. Like I mean, they didn't have SI units or in those days, right? Anyway, he continues like that. Uh, let me. T I made a comment, I think, also on the piece. Let's put that on. Yeah. Hi, boy. What did I say here? Ah, here. Yeah. Let me enlarge it a little bit. Otherwise, it's not readable for you. So, if you continue through this, then um, then he writes. Uh, so the, the whole problem here is about uh, two, two, bo two bodies impacting, eh? what he's talking about. So all the time, two bodies impacting. And then uh, he devises a nice experiment where he thinks, well, let's take two pendula and then with two different bodies and then hang them on the same cord and then bang, they impact and then I'm going to, I cannot measure their velocity. But I can measure how, how after reflection, so after the impact, so I can release them at the same height, or I can release one at the height, and then look how high the other will come, or both, or uh, you can do these experiments. And from those, he then uh, finds out how many parts one comes back. And but first, he writes uh, by the same, together with the third law, um, the third law is action is minus reaction, uh, Sir Christopher Wren, Dr. Wallace, and Mr. Huygens, the grace geometer of our times. Um, so he gives credit to his colleagues, and that is smart when you're in academia. So he shows, well, I, I know my classics, I know they worked on that topic, and they, they also has written down some stuff. So he, he gives them credit, right? It's nice that he, 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 s he says nothing about Christopher Wren and nothing about Wallace, but he gives Huygens, eh, our Dutch pride, Oh yeah, here you see the experiment, right? With the two balls uh, from a certain height and here from a certain height and he measures that. Well, what was my next remark? Nothing? Oh yeah. Thus trying the thing with pendulums of 10 feet in equal as well as equal on opposite bodies and making the bodies to concur eh, after uh, descent through a space so many feet, I find always without an error three inches that when the bodies occur together directly, equal changes towards the contrary parts. So the English is very complex, but the idea is, when he repeated the experiment, they always found the same, same reflection, actually. Okay. And then he says, uh, in bodies imperfectly elastic, the velocity of return is to be dis dimi diminished eh, by elastic forces, because that forces uh, will suffer uh, the extension, eh, like a hammer, bang, bang. And, 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 then, and then comes the most important statement, and makes the bodies to return one to the other with a relative velocity which is in a given ratio to the relative velocity in which they meet. And that is our glue. So this one sentence where he says, well, I discovered that depending on the material of the body, they have some velocity by which they impact, 
And then when they separate, the, the ratio of those two velocities is for the type of bodies, glass bodies or uh, hard, uh, yeah, what he mentions some materials here, if I remember well. Oh yeah, here, you see cork, uh, balls of glass. So he says the ratio for, what was this, cork? Uh, balls are always in, five to one. Balls of steel re return with the same velocity. So there's always no loss in steel. He says hey, the, the approaching relative velocity is the same. And then for, what is it, balls of glass is 15 to 16, eh, so almost one. So he said, that depends on the material. It has nothing to do with impact velocities or mass or whatsoever. So if we then uh, translate that to our case, how, how would we formulate that? What is our glue? What is the glue we are missing? Well, that's the, uh, the glue, the Newton glue in this case. So Newton's uh, impact law, eh? in our case, our, our glue, is that the velocity by which they approach, so let's say that x dot uh, eh, relative uh, minus, sorry, eh? minus, divided by uh, the relative velocity uh, after impact, this is always a constant. Now, if things, uh, if you lose stuff, probably this one will be higher than this one, right? Or is the other way? Oh no, the, the approaching one is will be higher than the separating one. <coughs> so maybe we should turn it around and we say, well, let's look at the the velocity, relative velocity after impact divided by the relative velocity before impact, because then there's never a zero here, right? And that, he says, is a constant number. Now, one is negative and the other is positive, so you say it's mi 1 minus e. So in the ideal case, eh, so if you have a pure elastic uh, uh, impact, like with steel, or for instance, then e is 1, meaning that they, they approach with a certain velocity and they separate again with exactly that same velocity. Yeah? I see question marks in your eyes. No? Yeah. Hey? Okay. And then if you have pure plastic, meaning uh, uh, you, you drop uh, 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 something on the ground and it just stays there, it, it doesn't bounce, then the E is zero, or in other words, the velocity after impact, uh, the relative velocity is zero. They are just glued together. And this law, this is the, the missing glue in our equation. So our third equation, uh, so our third, uh, third equation is now, in our terms, of course, uh, the, the velocity, the relative velocity after impact is minus E, the relative velocity before impact, or in our terms, so what was the relative velocity before impact, uh, and then we just have to, to say, uh, what, what was it, uh, which was, V was going faster, right? V plus minus U plus. Yeah? And then, now we don't have to think, it's minus E times V minus minus U minus. Yeah? So why is it minus? Now, uh, it's minus because um, if you are uh, approaching, that's something else than uh, separating. So the relative velocity, I mean, you have to take, that's again the whole sign problem. I think that the most difficult thing in, in, in science is signs, plus and minus. I mean, um, Einstein, relativity, that's easy. Uh, Bosonum, no problem. I do it every day. Quarks, I can calculate them in a jiffy. But getting the signs right, the plus and the minus, that is difficult. That is really difficult. Anyway, uh, here the relative velocity is defined as uh, when they apparently uh, plus when they approach, so separation is then negative. Therefore the minus e. Uh, but now we're in business. Now we have three equations and three unknowns. So let's rewrite our equation. So this stuff together with the other ones. So uh, our we, we know what our unknowns are. So we, 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 we know we can form a matrix equation and we know immediately at forehand what our unknowns are. That's the velocity uh, 
V after impact, U after impact, and of course the contact impulse. Right? Those were the unknowns. And then we just put into this, this set all our equations. Now the first equation is of course, uh, I would say, that's our first impact equation about V. What was it? M1 times V plus minus, I don't know by head, this guy. So M1 times U dot, so, yeah, and I bring this to the other side, so that's plus P, and then, then I have to bring it to the other side, yeah. So I get M1 here, it has nothing to do with uh, U, there's a 1 here, eh? P, and then here we have M1 V minus. That's the first equation. Then the second equation is with M2. Now we have to watch very clearly. So it's M2, here's a plus P. So here's a, if we bring it to the other side, it's going to be a minus P. So it's going to be minus 1. And then this to the other side is plus. So minus 1 and then M2 U minus. Yep. And then the last equation, well, that's here. So that's uh, V1 minus U1, there's no P involved, equals and then minus E V minus minus U minus. We have three equations, three unknowns, and so we should be able to solve this, right? It's always dangerous when you see a zero here, but what is the determinant of this matrix? Minus M1 plus M2. Yeah, minus M1 plus M2. I, I have brackets, yeah. So determinant is uh, minus M1 plus M2, so we're in business. Right? It works. So even if M1 is zero, you should get a result. If they're both zero, nothing happens, but that is like a void. And then if you start with a void, you get a void, and everything is a void. So that makes sense. Well, masses cannot be negative, so that's, that's good. Um, actually, when I see this matrix, I get this. This enormous satisfying feeling, like, oh. Why do I get that? Because it's symmetric. Yeah. Yeah, for it's symmetric, that's nice, but not all symmetric things give me this, oh. There's content here. Remember how our DAE was <coughs> Mass matrix, Jacobian of constraints, uh, transposed zeros. And what did we have here? Accelerations, the Lagrangian multipliers, and all right-hand side stuff. And isn't that beautiful? It's exactly the same, exactly. Again, I mean, if we separate here, we say, oh yeah, we have a mass matrix here, right? We have here some constraint, eh? some constraint, some kinematic thing, some glue type of thing. The glue is a bit different than in this case, but... And again, if we know what this is, we, we, we can just put it here. We don't, we, we need not make free body diagrams, no, we don't have to do that. It's unnecessary. If we know this, we can put it here and it's, we're in business. And we have a right-hand side. And that turns to be, uh, that, that, that's also in the general case. So if you do the general equations of motion for your uh, multi-body dynamic system, uh, and then the only thing which you have to do is you have to take your equation of motion, fi minus mij x double dot j, uh, where did I write? Um, what's it? Yeah, minus some C, K, uh, I, yeah, I equations, lambda K, yeah? So 
is zero, so these are, are my equations of motion. If I want to have impulsive equations, well, I put an integral in front of it, I multiply with dt, and I take the integral from t minus to t plus, and I take the limit case where t minus goes to t plus. And if I do that, then I get a, a set of equations. I have to introduce new variables. So the, the fi's, which were applied forces, now become applied impulses. My, uh, if I do this integral, I get now minus mij, and then I get x dot j plus minus x dot j minus, right? Uh, spend this integral. If I do this guy, well, I get this, CKI. Uh, this is a Jacobian, and since the time interval shrinks, 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 the geometry doesn't change. So in the integral, this is just numbers. You don't have to take anything into account. It's just this configuration. And then the lambda k, which were initially constrained forces, now become constrained impulses, or contact impulses. So these are contact and constraint impulses. So this is what happens at the wall here, yeah, where you have bang, and in the joints. Oops. And this guy, well usually this is an applied impulse, and well an applied impulse you can see as a a guy coming with a, a hammer and then hitting very hard. So uh, bang, but it's almost never the case. So usually this is this is usually zero. Uh, sorry, you surely zero. So uh, is zero, of course. Then we have these nice equations, and of course then the other set of equations are just. Well, velocities before impact, remember, uh, c comma x dot x dot, nee, not so quick, c k comma i x dot i after impact equals minus e c k i x dot i before impact, and then we're in business. So again, if we combine this with this, we have a beautiful set of equations with our MIJ, NRCKI, etc. Uh, read the book. Everything is neatly written out in the book on this. Okay, one minute over time. Sorry for that. See you in two weeks. The homework schedule is a one-week schedule, but the lecture schedule is two weeks.